a warm good morning to one and all present here it is an honor for me to welcome and introduce a resource person we welcome you sir thank you madam he is going to deliver a talk on the topic sound quality enhancement in digital hearing aids using advanced digital pro processing techniques here is a brief introduction among dr ashutoshkar Dr. Ashutoshka is working as an assistant professor at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Design and Manufacturing, IIIT DM, Kanjipuram, Chennai, in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Before joining IIIT DM, he, uh, Kanjipuram, he worked as an assistant professor in Bits Bilani, Rajasthan, India, for two years, and IIIT Bhuneshwar for four years. He is a recipient of the prestigious Marie Curie Postdoctoral Fellowship at Aalborg University, Denmark, from 2015 to 2017. In Aalborg University, Denmark, he was affiliated with the Signal and Information Processing Group at the Department of Electronic Systems. Dr. Ashitosh is also a visiting research scientist to ESAT lab at the Department of Electrical Engineering at Catholic University of Leuven, Belgium, and Department of Medical Physics and Acoustics at University of Oldenburg, Germany, and the Signal Processing Group at Concordia University, Canada for research on advanced signal processing and machine learning. His research field includes the areas of digital signal processing, adaptive filters, machine learning, acoustics, and hearing aid system design. He has successfully implemented Rs. 1.29 crore worth sponsored research project by the European Union, Belgium, and now working on two industry sponsored projects with 30 lakh and 11 lakh respectively. He has more than 90 research papers in reputed journals and conferences at international level. He is an associate editor of Circuit Systems and Signal Processing, Sprinter, and a senior member IEEE. He is PhD from BIT Mercer and MTech from NIT Hampur, both in field of digital signal processing. He has received many awards, among which the notable ones are the contract of recognition on behalf of President of India from All India Radio, four times from 2012 to 16 for outstanding technical presentation from All India Radio Delhi and Katak stations. Sir, now I request you to deliver your talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thanks for this nice uh, introduction about me. Uh, so first of all, at the very outset, uh, I would like to say a very good morning uh, to you and to all uh, members who are present over here. And thank you for uh, attending this uh, talk or uh, giving your valuable time to hear me uh, in this pandemic situation. And uh, uh, at the same time, I would like to say thank you for inviting the entire CIT team, Dr. Premalata and the entire team at CIT for inviting me for this uh, presentation. So this presentation I have planned in this way, looking at the topic of the short term course. I know this is the last day. Uh, so the short term course is mostly on the biomedical signal analysis and processing using uh, like uh, optimization in signal processing, machine learning, all those techniques. So today I will talk mostly about the signal processing or applied machine learning for a biomedical device that is hearing aids and its advanced applications. So all the work that we will discuss today are from 2017 to 2020. So I can say they are the latest or state of the art work which has been done on sound quality enhancement for hearing aids. So my presentation I have been given one and a half hour. So I would like to wind up it in one hour, 20 to 25 minutes. And uh, sometime at the end, I would like to keep for some discussion or answering your questions. So now I will start the presentation. So you all can share my, see my screen, which I have shared. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam, it is in full screen mode at your end. Sir, it is visible. It is. Uh, it is full screen, right? I made it full screen. Yes, it's full screen. It's full screen. 
Oh, and my voice is also clear to all, uh, like you two and all others. Yes, sir, it's perfect. Okay, okay. If you need me to be a little bit more loud enough, then you can intervene in between and tell me, sir, please be loud enough. We cannot hear you. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. So uh, uh, this topic is mostly on the acoustic signal processing and its application for digital hearing aids. And mostly in this presentation, you can see in the top of this uh, title slide, three equipments are mentioned in front of you, microphone, loudspeaker, and hearing aid. So mostly we will talk about the sign signal processing and optimization using advanced signal processing techniques and between these three or between these equipments. Preliminaries in which I will talk about what is the motivation behind this? Because normally, you know, uh, we just uh, present something and start talking about it uh, and for one and a half hour. And uh, so there is not enough motivation. Why somebody will sit, will devote one and a half hour and hear my talk. So these are some of the reasons behind it. Normally, we people take hearing loss quite lightly. And most of us think, even if the educated mass, they think that hearing loss only affects old people or whenever we get more older, then we get hearing loss. In research, it has been found by Dr. Sandra Miller, who is one of the well-known audiologists, not in Europe, but in the entire world, that hearing loss affects only 33% people, those who are actually old, that means above the age of 60. Other people, 67% are getting affected between the age of 18 to 44. So it is quite alarming for all of us that hearing impairment or hearing loss can happen to irrespective of your age. Next point, like people normally think that uh, your doctor, like whom you normally visit, can talk, tell about like you have a hearing loss, a problem or something. But that is actually wrong. Any doctor whom you visit for normal medicines cannot tell you about hearing loss. You need to visit audiologist and you need to go or undergo a test, audiological test, which is normally free of cost in government hospitals throughout uh, Tamil Nadu and many places in India and in private hospitals also it costs quite less. And so hearing test without that, it is very difficult to say whether somebody has a hearing problem or not. People also say there is a myth that if I am not exposed to high frequency, if I am not exposed to a bomb blast or that sort of thing, my hearing is intact. I can never say or comment on my hearing. And the science or the research says 40% of people not in India, but in the entire world, they have hearing loss, they have hearing issues, but actually they don't know about it. And this is a science, hearing science, which has been neglected a lot. If you see hearing impairment or hearing loss, each of three varieties, like we have the impairment of vision, each of three types. One is mild hearing loss, in which, like I can accommodate if I have a mild hearing loss, just like I will go close to the person who is speaking to me, I will request to be a little loud enough so that I can hear. This is called as mild loss. Point number two is moderate loss. Moderate loss is alarming. That means I have now lost some of my hearing and I am able to hear only 50 to 60 percent. This is called as moderate hearing loss in which we intervene with hearing aid devices, which you all might have seen few people wearing around you. Then severe hearing loss. In severe cases, hearing aids up to some extent can help you. For the other cases, for severe hearing loss, we need to go for, or we need to, like in many cases, that might be an internal problem with the cochlea or something that I will show in my upcoming slide, in which normally operations is necessary. And that is quite costly and very, that is very costly uh, thing uh, which is being performed. Five to 10 lakh at least people spend for those severe hearing loss. And also, uh, this uh, will not guarantee that you will completely revive from that. Again, now hearing aids are never being a style statement. So what happens, people, normally we all are style cousins, irrespective of our background and from where we believe. So therefore, people you see, I am wearing a glass, it is a style statement. People used to spend 5,000, 6,000 rupees for wearing different glasses, even they don't have any eye to play. Ray-Ban glass, so-and-so glass, people wear just as style statement. Because from the beginning, vision loss is not something which we normally hide and we just go for a glass. But hearing loss is something all over the world, research says, people normally hide. 
and they normally uh, like they don't feel good to wear hearing aid or to let others know that i am wearing hearing aid so this is a neglected science therefore and but it is something with which more than 5% of the entire population of the world and 7% of the entire population of india are affected only 3% in world and 4% in india know that they have hearing loss that means there is a large group of people those who do not know that they are having hearing loss so therefore there are number of industries government agencies those who work on it so knowing about the device and why the signal processing of the device is a plays a vital role in improving the entire sound quality or experience for the user who is using this device is very very important let me go to the next slide so this is the a basic diagram of one side of our human ear in the human ear the most important thing is the ear drum and basically we are able to hear some sound because of the vibration or pressure variation inside the human ear and in that case a small bone you can say which vibrates due to pressure variation we are able to hear most important thing over here we people now we get ourselves exposed with headphones and earphones with high sound so if frequent and this is a slow poison sort of thing let me again repeat high sound is a slow poison sort of thing slow poison doesn't kill immediately to you immediately you it kills slowly and slowly similarly this high sound which we normally insert the ear plug inside this and we enjoy the song and all at very high volume it kills your hearing and it loosens your nerve what is nerve that i will show in the next slide so here you see this is another one this is auditory nerve you all can see my screen near the cochlea this is the cochlea and near that there is auditory nerve this nerve is directly connected to my brain and if this nerve gets affected your you like our perception of sound reduces and when i cannot perceive a sound when i cannot know what somebody is telling that is what is called as hearing loss so auditory nerve is something which is very very important as far as human hearing or human auditory system is concerned now this is a detailed diagram in this diagram i just need to highlight that there is cochlea so in cochlea you see in the upper diagram it is there in lower diagram i have just shown it as a circular thing so in the cochlea is a device it's a, it's a it's a, an organ in our human auditory system which gets affected let's say it gets affected then normally hearing aids are like they may not help us up to a great extent in that case in that case people go for cochlear implant you might have heard about this term implanting the cochlea and that is very very costly so unless until we protect our hearing and know that why this hearing issues are there and people normally do not go for hearing aids also they say oh i have some hearing problem i can manage if you manage at for some particular time you will be able to manage then suddenly it will shoot up and you will find that you are in a particular position where you are not able to hear most of the voices if you are able to hear you can you have lost the perception you cannot know it is man voice or female voice it is child's voice or animal's voice you will lose your perception so taking care of our auditory system is important and wearing the hearing aid at the right time is also important that is what auditory system hearing science says now this is the very basic hearing aid and with reference i am telling this is jsignia siemens hearing aid so this is a very low cost hearing aid now why it is low cost hearing aid the reason behind this is this one you see this device which i am showing to you there are three important components to it one is a speaker one is a mic and one is an amplifier so many people just visualize the hearing aid as an amplifying device and actually they are correct hearing aid is nothing but an amplifier rather than requesting somebody please tell loudly what we do we normally wear the hearing aid the microphone gets the sound amplifies it with the amplifier and then we hear the sound like inside in our ear canal and then that sound is amplified so and normally this is nothing but an amplifier so you all might be thinking that sir if it is an amplifier if it simply amplifies the signal then why there is a need to study about the science 
why there is a need to study about the signal processing behind it and whether it is purely digital or not because amplifier can be an analog amplifier all right so that is what we will study and that is what we will discuss today that though it is simply an amplifier simply amplifying the signal why is the knowing the signal processing behind it is important let me go to the next you see these are the three very basic hearing aids which all over the world are quite famous one is b t e b means behind t means the e means ear behind the ear hearing aid it is behind the ear and this thing goes to the ear canal which loudly produces the sound that it receives from the microphone one is mini bt research found that people are style cursors they don't want to show others that they are using hearing aid so therefore mini hearing aid came which you can hide with your hair and that others will not come to know that you are actually using an air a hearing aid device then in the ear hearing aid came like you have can just directly push it inside the ear and it it will receive the signal and it will produce it loudly in the ear canal so that the signal will be clear to you now all the development which happened before the year 2000 i can say was on miniaturizing that means minimizing the size of hearing aids all the research which were performed earlier again i am repeating because it is very important with this i will talk about the state of the art work was on was based on minimizing the size of the hearing aid if we minimize the size of the hearing aid what will happen you see when i am just see the last one in the ear hearing aid in the ear hearing aid you see this where the sound gets produced that means the speaker and where we receive the sound that means the mic the distance between them is very very less and the distance gradually decreases for behind the ear hearing aid it was more then for mini hearing aid the distance between loudspeaker and microphone reduces and for in the ear hearing aid the distance further reduces when the distance reduce then what will happen then we get a phenomenon which is normally called as feedback in hearing aids what is that one that we will study and due to this effect due to this feedback effect most of the people after using only 6 months this is what i am telling supported by data and information which has been published in prestigious journals the 50% people use the hearing aid after 6 months of their uses that means other 50% people they use the hearing aid and throw it and normally this low cost hearing aid which normally various government and ngo agencies they distribute free of cost many people use it and after a particular point in time they hear a issue or problem of howling or feedback whistling it provides a whistle sound like that a whistle sound comes and after that these people throw the hearing aid so therefore it is very important to study the signal processing behind the device and being an engineer our job is to optimize the signal processing so that the person who is using an hearing aid will use the device with all the advanced signal processing features and facilities so that the entire experience will be better and the hearing rehabilitation will be better let's go to the next slide so what affects the sound quality of the hearing aid most with this we will start our technical slides and the preliminary section is now over so you see now i will show you the block diagrams and the details of it but my objective is because now whatever time has been with me one hour in that my objective is to tell you about the block diagram and the research which we have performed which has been done in past with proper referencing and at the same time uh, because all of you might be from various different background so my objective is to tell this thing in such a way so that though somebody is not from exactly this background can understand the science and technology behind it okay so now this block diagram which has been shown in front of you is not proposed by us it is a very very basic block diagram of what happens inside the hearing 
So first of all, I have highlighted something in purple and blue because it is online mode. So that's why. So you see this FK and FKFK, you just simply forget that one. You just think that that is not there. Just see the direct connection between XN and the speaker. What is there? Mic is there. Mic of our hearing aid. Speaker is there. Speaker of our hearing aid. In between mic and speaker, what is there? GK is there, which has been circled over here. What is that GK? That GK is called as the gain. Or it is the signal processing block which provides gain or amplitude modif uh, amplification, magnitude amplification of the to the magnitude of our input signal. That means GK is nothing but an amplifier. What happens? Why we need to study about the sound quality? Because when GK provides an amplification because I have hearing impairment, I cannot directly hear what has been told through the microphone. So I need an amplification and GK provides that amplification. When speaker amplifies the signal, as the, you see, I'm showing a pain, the distance between the speaker and because hearing it is a small device, the distance between the speaker and the mic is small or mic and speaker is small. So therefore we get a feedback path or we get a coupling between the loudspeaker and the mic. So let's say I'm telling you, hello, at the same time, I have told only hello, but at the same time, hello got produced, you heard me. After that, from the hello, some leakage sound goes and again gets to the mic. And the mic again provides the sound hello, again hello. After that, it becomes a whistling sound for you. It is not hello, it is just a whistling sound. First of all, hello, we supported by tung, which is called as feedback whistling. And maximum people, they Hearing it only after six months of use due to this problem of feedback whistling, which has been shown over here in this block diagram with FK, where FK is the feedback path. FV of N is the feedback signal which creates the feedback whistling. That needs to be addressed. So the research says this needs to be addressed, or this can be addressed by what? By a filter which is very well known as or which is a well known advanced signal processing technique that is called as adaptive filters. So on this, I will now go to a couple of slides about adaptive filter because some people might have might be knowing about it. Some people might not be knowing about it. So let me tell about it. Adaptive filter can also be told as an applied machine learning technique. What is the job of an adaptive filter over here? You see. Adaptive filter runs on the principle of iterative or cyclic optimization. That is also a part, you can say, least mean square optimization is also a part of our machine learning. Optimization using machine learning. What it does? Here you see, I have just shown the simplest diagram of any adaptive weight update mechanism in which a filter, which is their normal adaptive filters, are finite impulse response filters they are inherently stable as you know all fir filters are inherently stable and here the fir filters are defined by filter coefficients which are also called as filter weights which are also called the call as taps so fir filters are represented by filter coefficients filter weights which are also called as taps this is my traversal filter in this block diagram which you right now see on your screen. This traversal filter weights can get updated by an adaptive weight control mechanism. So how the weight control mechanism works? It works on this principle of optimization. What it optimizes? It optimizes the difference between the desired signal and the actual signal. That is the error signal. Whether it optimizes the error? No, not directly the absolute value of the error. It optimizes, let me show the next slide. It optimizes with the help of an algorithm. That is the brain of adaptive filter, we can say. With the help of an algorithm, it optimizes MSE, that is mean square error, or LS, that is least square error. So by adaptive filtering technique, we can either optimize mean square error or we can optimize least square error by the adaptive filtering technique and accordingly we get two different set of adaptive algorithms okay 
So adaptive algorithms, because now algorithm is very important. Why? Because adaptive filter helps me to identify the feedback path. As the feedback path is countered, that means the feedback signal a B of N, which creates the switching, which creates the issue because of which people are throwing the hearing aid. To counter this issue, I have adaptive filter with me. So now adaptive filter, when it will counter this issue, what is helping adaptive filter? Adaptive algorithm. Why? Because that is the brain behind the filter. That is telling how the filter weights or coefficients should update themselves because it's a peculiar filter. The filter can change its impulse response in the due course of the process. The filter can change its coefficient. Change means the coefficient value can increase, the coefficient value can decrease. So the adaptive algorithm which does this, it has got some specific parameters through which we judge the algorithm. For example, person X proposed algorithm 1, person Y proposed algorithm number 2, and I am Asutoskar proposed algorithm number 3. I will say my algorithm is better than the other two algorithms. What are the parameters? With the help of what, I will tell that my algorithms are actually better than the others. These are the parameters. Rate of convergence. How quickly I achieve the optimality. All optimization algorithms try to achieve the optimality. What is our optimality in this case? What is optimality in this added device, hearing aid? Our optimality is to reduce the feedback whistling as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. The time taken to achieve that one is called as the rate of convergence. Very important parameter. Robustness. Small variation in input should produce small variation in output. That is called as robustness. If small variation in input produces large variation at the output, that means my algorithm is not robust, should not be preferred. Computational complexity, you all have idea about it. Any algorithm we design, we plan for having a least computational complexity. But if computational complexity is higher, but I am getting at the same price, I am getting better robustness, better tracking, better missile adjustment and high speed of convergence then I can prefer an algorithm which is computationally intensive. Why? Because of the developments in VLSI techniques, computational intensive thing addressing that with some VLSI device or chip is not at all an issue. Structure, what is the design of the algorithm? How many filter weights are necessary? How many coefficients are necessary? Is it very complex or simple? That is about the structure of the algorithm. Tracking, you know, hearing aid, and the feedback path, both are dynamic. Why? Because a person is wearing hearing aid and sitting. Now a, some work is there, he can go outside, he can come inside, he can go to another room, he can go inside a car, he can go to a mall. So therefore, when you change the impulse response, then the algorithm should be able to track that change. That is called as tracking capability of the algorithm. Change the impulse response, algorithm is able to track that. So all these parameters are vital parameters. Why? Because I will show the latest work now. I will go deep into the research. There, all these parameters I will be telling you, I will be showing you with respect to which we have judged the performance of our algorithm with the existing state of the art. Let me go to the next slide. Adaptive feedback cancellation algorithm. Now you see, why we will study about feedback cancellation? Now you see, sir, adaptive filter you shown, it is there. Adaptive algorithms, Asutosh score has not developed. That has been developed 25 years back by Simon Akin, B. Widrow, many esteemed people. That is already there. And the feedback cancellation is there at its own place. So if everything is there, what research I have done? Why I am presenting in front of you with a lot of uh, like enthusiasm that I have done some work or we have done some work in our team? The reason behind it is, though existing techniques are available, there is always a scope of improvement. What is that improvement? Let me tell you. In the basic feedback canceller, which is shown below the slide, some points are mentioned. I will not go one by one through the points to save time. I will directly tell you. Now you see the loudspeaker signal and the input signal. The correlation between them is called as biasing. This is not our amplifier biasing, common emitter, common base. That is something else. Here in hearing science or in our acoustic processing of acoustic signal processing for hearing aids, 
the correlation between the speaker and the you that means speaker signal that is the un the signal which goes to the speaker and the input signal x and the correlation between that that is called as biasing and what is our aim to get an unbiased estimate unbiased estimate means to reduce the cross correlation between these two signals how to reduce the cross correlation that means we need to make expected value of this and that equals to zero how to get that if we do not get that what happens though this technique exists though adaptive filter tries to identify the feedback path tries to counter its effects try to reduce the howl howling we get howling and we get instability therefore still research is active in this domain still many people are working in this domain in this feedback to address the issue of feedback howling and instability major issue is instability instability is the major reason along with how howling because of which people are not preferring to use this device you see i am wearing this glass is there any instability no unless until my daughter puts it down and it, it breaks there is no problem with it but you see hearing it you are neither putting down or neither somebody is throwing it you are wearing it but still you are not able to wear it comfortably because of this signal processing issues and signal enhancement issues over there what is stability i will tell you it gets you proper amplification faithful amplification after some time i tell you something your hearing aid doesn't amplify it properly either it over amplifies or it under amplifies that is what my stability gets affected along with and this is always supported by the howling which is another effect which we need to address being signal processing specialists all right let me go to the next slide so now here i have told i have shown about all the proposed papers journal papers only that in our team we have published this research work has been conducted along with concordia university canada alborg university denmark and university of kazuvejak serbia so there in alborg lab and concordia lab we have done number of experimentation listening tests so all these algorithms have been, have been validated through number of rounds of listening tests with human participants considering all the ethical parameters we have signed all the ethical parameters that whatever test we are doing will not affect anybody's hearing will not make somebody deaf and all the people have voluntarily participated in this listening test i have to tell this because this is the ethical guideline that before presenting our work we should always say that we have followed all ethical parameters and following by set out by the world health organization to conduct any research with human participants so you see these are the six journal papers starting from 2017 to 20 i am showing along with that we have published number of conference papers and book chapters that i am not showing at this point in time only the major publications have been highlighted though the first work got published in 2017 january we started working about it working on it from november 2015 so after some 14 months time the first work came out okay so today in my presentation i will talk about all the six work in brief and uh, looking at the time which is available with me but again my intention is that all can understand what i am telling so in that way i will speak. i will start with the very first work which we did that is a blpc vocoder based adaptive feedback cancellation so this is the block diagram so this block diagram was not proposed by us i am telling it again this was not proposed by us this was proposed by a group of people from denmark technical university which is situated in copenhagen what they did they used a synthetic version of the signal which comes out of the hearing aid again i am repeating our objective is to minimize the correlation between the input xn and the un that is the loudspeaker signal or the signal which goes to the loudspeaker if we reduce the correlation what will happen biasing gate reduce if biasing gate reduce what will happen feedback cancellation reduces feedback cancellation will reduce then howling will reduce howling will reduce then stability will increase that is the overall goal and that is the goal of all people those who work on acoustic signal processing processing of hearing sense with this when this work was done then people used lp analysis and synthesis which are well known techniques in our speech processing this lp analysis and synthesis can 
what it can do it can generate a synthetic version of the speech signal which perceptually sounds same as that of the speech perceptually sound that means when i hear this perceptually it is same but not exactly same as that of the or doesn't exactly get all the characteristics of the normal speech signal so here you see with the help of a white noise generator lp analysis and synthesis white noise generator all of you know what it is we generate a synthetic version let me show over here so you see a synthetic version so un which has been circled with the purple and usyn which is circled with the green mark it see that is syn means synthetic that syn sounds perceptually quite similar as that of the un what is not even why is not even because we are also inserting a white noise generator or we are using a white noise and white noise you all of you know what is it white noise is an iid process iid means independently and infinitely distributed why we are using white noise because our objective is to make the signal now in place of un we are using qn because un we have processed and generated a signal qn which goes to the speaker my objective is to reduce the correlation between qn which has been put inside a square over here and the xn that is the input signal so that i can reduce the fb of it so for that reason we are getting a synthetic version of the un signal using lp analysis and synthesis then we are passing it through high pass filter why you see this feedback which occurs it is a frequency dependent device so feedback which occurs either it occurs at low frequency or it occurs at high frequency so the major issue for any feedback canceller or any engineer who is doing feedback cancellation is to address both the low and high frequency at the same time the blpc vocoder based system which i am showing you right now in front of you they address the issue of or it addresses the issue of high frequency biasing that means it reduces the biasing or the correlation or the feedback at higher frequency rates why how because it inserts white noise white noise is an independent signal individualistic signal because of that qn which i get white because of this synthetic signal we are generating qn not with the direct signal and then we are passing it through high pass filter the processed version the unprocessed version is passed through the low pass filter processed means with lp analysis and synthesis there we are not going we are not going for any lp analysis and synthesis we are directly processing the low frequency so low frequency directly from the signal i am taking and high frequency component after lp analysis and synthesis i am taking so i can say low plus high makes the signal so low is intact high frequency part of the signal what i what is there as it has been processed with white noise generator and lp analysis and synthesis it has got less correlation with the input signal xn so if correlation will less what will happen performance escalation will be there advantages now as in this case i have circled low pass filter and high pass filter why because low pass filter directly takes my un signal high pass filter after processing it takes which is circled in red over here so high frequency bias reduces that is the blpc vocoder based feedback cancellation which is in front of you which was proposed by esteemed researchers from dtu denmark technical university but the issue which was with it or the advantage is itself disadvantage what is the disadvantage disadvantage is low frequency biasing the correlation at low frequency between the input xn and qn is not addressed properly or has not been addressed properly needs to be addressed for that some improvement has to be proposed what my point so this is the feedback canceller what are the components used what is the role of lp analysis and synthesis what are the roles of low pass and high pass filter what is the objective over here and what are the advantages and disadvantages i have tried to touch each and every point now i will tell what is the modification that we performed on this structure let me go to the next slide so you see this is our proposed structure and let me tell our proposed part comes from the right hand side you see i have circled rn that is a 
probe signal. What we did? QL in the exactly same as that of those people or those researchers we generated. But we found this QN addresses only the high frequency biasing and the low frequency biasing is not addressed. Therefore, we used an estimation concept in adaptive processing or step-by-step -step cyclic optimization process. Rather than using directly the adaptive filter, we use estimated version of the adaptive filter along with the direct adaptive. And we try to update that estimated version with another signal, which is QN plus RN, where RN is a probe signal. Probe, its name is probe. What is the probe signal? Probe signal is an externally added signal, which is which can be a white noise signal also. So here the probe signal which is there is the white noise signal which we added additionally to the QN signal because we found that here the processing we are doing reduces only high frequency bias, low frequency bias still exists. We added a probe signal rather than direct adaptive filtering we went for direct as well as an estimated version that is also run by the probe as well as by the QR of N. QR of N runs the estimated version and QN, direct the RN probe, runs the FF of K, that is my adaptive filter. In every block diagram, I will show you FK feedback path, FK adaptive filter. All right. So now you see advantage in this case. When the probe signal gets added to the loudspeaker, we found or we figured out, and it has been highlighted over here in this block diagram, that the low frequency bias also gets reduced along with the high frequency. Why it gets reduced? Because RN, the probe we added, it is nothing but zero mean white process, a white signal. And also you cannot add the white of any magnitude. You have to be very careful because whatever you are adding, if it goes beyond a limit, it directly be, is produced by the speaker. So the, you are actually trying to solve or mask, mask the feedback for the hearing aid user. While masking, the masking sound should not be enough. So that the hearing aid person, the person who is using the hearing aid will also hear the masking sound, which is the probe sound over here. Let me repeat again, this probe signal, which we are inserting, this is also a process of optimization. How we are optimizing? Optimizing by obfuscation, by masking. We are inserting a signal, probe signal, to obfuscate, to mask the QN. When we try to insert it, then we should be very careful. Otherwise, the speaker will produce the signal loudly. So along with the original signal, the hearing aid person will also hear the white noise or the noisy version of it. Then again, we are not rather than making this situation good for him or her, we are making it worse. So therefore, it is while selecting the probe noise, we have to be very careful. At the same time, when we carefully selected it, did the experimentation in our lab, we found that addition of probe noise along with the high frequency bias, it also addresses the low frequency bias property. So BLPC vocoder based this feedback cancellation which was existing, we tried to go for this probe based approach and with simple modifications and adaptive filtering, we found the performance is good. Performance is good, that is a part of result. Sometimes in simulation and result, we get really encouraging performance. But unless until we prove it mathematically, we any research work or publish it because once you publish the work, the entire world sees it and they can comment on your this is wrong, this is right, this is what you wrote. Therefore, what we did, we went for another putting six months in it and we found the convergence and the steady state and tracking capability of this entire structure which was never done before. And we found the algorithm converges in mean, which is the minimum requirement for any adaptive algorithm. It should converge in mean. Our algorithm converts in mean. The steady state performance also we found quite acceptable. And then we went for writing this research. So in this research at the end, while before winding up the BLPC book order best thing, I would like to show that this probe approach, which you see probe noise approach here, what it does, it uncorrelates. Therefore, its name is importance of uncorrelated probe noise. What it does, it decorrelates. What decorrelates? It decorrelates QR of N with XL. So this is a signal, peculiar signal. When we add it with the original signal, which has got some correlation, when it gets added, it masks the signal. 
and mask it does the masking in such a way because these are signals these are not just mathematical term like 2 plus 5 they gets added here we are inserting masking the signal when we mask the signal properly when we add the signal properly then what happens that this masking reduces the correlation and feedback gets reduced i want to give a practical example let's say i am talking to you some sound comes from the other another room what i may do now i am using the remote i will simply increase the fan of my ac fan like uh, speed of my ac or i will switch on my fan that will not affect my conversation with you that may make my conversation intact but at the same time the noise which is produced by the ac or which is produced by the that the sound which is produced by the fan that may mask my voice little bit or in such a way so that you can hear me properly and at the same time that noise which is from another room interfering in my discussion with you will not interfere much that means in this case noise is helping to cancel noise to eradicate noise fan noise and ac noise is helping to mask my voice or to decorrelate my voice from the interference noise from the nearby room or with the nearby room and then you can hear properly this concept or this practical thing when we strike our mind then we used it in this vlbc vocoder based feedback cancellation with the help of the probe and estimation of filter and then we got enhanced and escalated performance therefore this is the importance of the uncorrelated probe noise importance of feed forward path delay this is the last technical point in vlbc vocoder based normally researchers found at the very beginning of research in hearing science or in this sound quality enhancement using signal processing technique this is more of signal processing than hearing science i am talking people found that when we insert some amount of delay millisecond amount of delay in the hearing aid that means hearing aid means gain means amplification when we provide some amount of delay then it actually helps in decoding so many people many researchers went and providing delay and delay and delay research says when we provide delay up to a particular point in time 1 millisecond 1.5 millisecond then decorrelation is all right when we go beyond a particular limit we provide 3 sec millisecond 5 millisecond 4 millisecond delay then that delay only creates delay in hearing for the hearing impaired person you are making the situation worse for him so forward path delay providing this short and relevant delay in the forward path is acceptable but providing like whatever amount of delay in the forward path or telling your acoustician just to provide more delay so that you don't hear any howling is not acceptable because with that amount of delay what will happen the voice which we you will hear like you know will be with some delay somebody is telling you after some time you are hearing you and that means you are not in a real time conversation all right okay so these are the results and we actually got some 20 some results we have put in our research but here i have just highlighted four so when we check the misalignment performance we found that our proposed structure is performing better compared to the existing vlpc afc and also the additive stable gain in feedback cancellation two parameters are very important one is asg one is msg additive stable gain maximum stable gain and it should always be high what we found here when we go for the recursive version of the algorithm that is the least square optimization using the adaptive filtering we are getting better performance compared to the nlms based optimization that means the normalized least mean square based optimization so therefore this is you know an advantage which we got due to the proposing the probe noise based approach decorrelation based approach and little bit of feed forward path delay over the existing design which is simple vlpc vocoder based adaptive feedback canceller got my point okay let's go to the next slide so this is the next work that we did the vlpc vocoder based afc it performed better for misalignment asc msc but you know the perceptually when we conduct the listening tests the results were not that encouraging the results were good but not that encouraging therefore we were not able to put all the listening test results in the research we only wrote it very clearly that mathematically and simulation wise this result is good 
but as far as perceptual listening is concerned that means i am bringing one human subject to my lab and telling you hear this sound you hear that sound and you tell perceptually what is the difference between them and normally they tell it by giving some score score like listening score we provide them see they put some score in there so in that we found that we are not getting really escalated performance so it was not exciting because of which this is what motivated us to go for convex combination of adaptive filters for feedback cancels what is it this is the block diagram of convex combination of adaptive filter. what is a convex combination why it is called convex combination the point is when we go for an adaptive filtering step size of weight adaptation is one of the most important parameters what it does a step size for adaptation decides what is my rate of convergence that means how quickly i achieve the optimality how quickly i reach the optimality that is what the step size for weight adaptation conforms if my step size is smaller then what will happen i that means you say that i am taking small steps i will achieve the optimality but late if my step size will be large then what will happen i will achieve the optimality quickly but at the same time stability issue may occur so therefore there should be a perfect trade off there should be a perfect choice of this step size got my point here you see i will give a practical example again suppose i am telling you to work work on a path which is very narrow so whether we will work fast on that or you will work slowly on that definitely you will work slowly because if you work slowly then you can maintain your stability and you will not fall down but if you work you want to work fast on that then it may happen that you, you are lucky then you will reach you are unlucky means you may fall down because the path so the same problem is there in adaptive filter neither we can sacrifice convergence nor we can sacrifice the steady state we need the best of both to get the best of both rather than using one adaptive filter we went for a convex combination that means each filter is solving a different problem one filter is adjusting the step size which which is a faster step size one filter is adjusting the step size which is a slower step size this is what is the convex combination i mentioned but rather than reading it i will just tell the logic the logic is with a psi n factor that is mentioned in the highlighted in blue color you can see this is the contribution part over the blpc booker or pcl what we did we went for a couple of adaptive filters all other things are intact the blpc is intact the probe noise is intact we went for the adaptive filter rather than one two and both the filter the weight adaptation step size in one particular filter it is higher in one particular filter it is slower but then it should be intelligently decided like i you we all talk about artificial intelligence so here also you we used the intelligence not with ai but with a process of optimization in that process we divide decide the factor psi n which you can directly see in your slide in that ppt psi n 1 minus psi n the psi n factor decides that how much i should take from the filter which converges faster and how much i should take from a filter which converges slower so that is what my psi n decides so psi n 1 minus psi previously for all combinations it was fixed at a particular value 0.5 0.7 and the region which was mentioned in the research was it is system dependent what is that system dependent means that means it depends on the room impulse response it depends on the laboratory of where you are conducting this experiment but here we tried to make it independent of the parameter change and rather than depending on a particular system we tried to make it independent with the help of proper optimization criteria so here also this has been optimized with respect to the mean square error what are the advantages as my filter part which has been highlighted over here and arrow two filter scheme has been arrowed over here and been highlighted what it does along with the arrow thing which is my blpc book order based lpc with the probe noise it doesn't reduce like the howling and feedback whistling that is the job of the blpc book order based lpc and probe noise but for the same thing it provides faster convergence 
when faster convergence is there then we can achieve the optimality quicker and that in return helps me to get better result convergence i told or i have shown in my slide in the adaptive algorithm was the number one parameter and is one of the most important parameters so therefore getting faster convergence is important at the same time maintaining the steady state error is so important so this technique which has a faster filter which has a slower filter and we combine them it provide it provides me the advantages of both these things that means it is just as it our we had ice cream with us that was our blpc bocoder based npc which was performing good result this is just putting hot chocolate on that ice cream with that means to get faster convergence and also to get a better steady state error and that to getting it with a perfect trade off which happens automatically user has not to do anything user will just put this algorithm and program it after that it is auto run it will run automatically and it will adjust the coefficient automatically whether it need to consider the faster filter it needs to consider the smaller filter it entirely depends on the input auto correlation matrix as well as the other mathematical things i am not telling right now otherwise i have to tell again a lot more things it automatically self adjust itself these are the advantages of the this convex combination of adaptive filter on which actually not one but couple of research work we published then how it is different from afc so these are the points basic afc was running on a closed loop system and it was employing simple lms nlms fx lms affine projection all these algorithms so therefore it was vulnerable to feedback whistling <coughs> because we are just simply changing an algorithm to get better performance so in that case high frequency biasing we are addressing low frequency biasing was an issue though we are addressing high and low both using the probe noise based approach at the same time the issue was to get a faster convergence and to get a better steady state error and that to to get a perfect trade off trade off means neither this nor that in between and that is better in a better way so just to get that one that is the thing which were not there and here the difference is all these parameters we are trying to improve we will cannot say that we improved upon everything but yes what was the existing state of the art we compared with that we improved upon the performance and really we got encouraging results but these encouraging results came at a cost which you can see in front of you right now the algorithm which we proposed that is dncms i'm again not going deep into the algorithm and its mathematics this will be beyond the scope of this talk which is for limited time so the algorithm says that the number of computations that i get for this uh, proposed technique so called proposed technique here the number of computations are more compared to the existing techniques it will definitely be more why because rather than one adaptive filter we are going for a couple of adaptive filters when we are going for more than one adaptive filter it is quite obvious that we will get more number of computations more number of multiplication more number of additions but when we do more number of multiplications additions if we are getting better result like which is presented in front of you for a feedback path which has been shown at the right we get better msd that is the mean square deviation one of the major parameters and you see for the proposed technique at two different values for a female speech signal which we recorded it is far better or improved compared to the existing state of the art and this research was published in a journal of nearly 4.7 impact factor so so this though this this thing this thing was a problem and which was also asked by the reviewers and by the esteemed researchers who reviewed this article that why computation complexity is more we told it is more because of the intricacy or complexity in the design but at the cost of the computation complexity i am getting improved result computation complexity can any way be addressed by proposing advanced vlsi techniques for manufacturing the chip but addressing this thing is much more important and finally our argument was bought and this thing was published afc in presence of multiple input this is something which has never been done before this is something which we did for the very first time i can say it is a quite novel and interesting work so this is the third work or fourth work which we published or which we presented uh, to the scientific society 
let me come to it so here you can see so i will just take a break water i will just take little water then i will continue madam my voice is clear i am continuing without stopping in between sir yes sir yeah voice oh. okay okay all right madam all right thank you sir it's clear okay okay let me continue from slide number 33 i we all are on slide number 33 right now so you can see this is a blp this is what we were we were discussing we are all modifying the structure and going for advanced feedback analysis but in the year 2017 in denmark and now in all over the world advanced hearing aids have been introduced and it has come to india also so there what is the facility we get in an advanced hearing aid the hearing aid has bluetooth so it can connect to any other device which has bluetooth for example we have hearing aid enabled tvs in many of the abroad countries it is their hearing aid enabled tv that means what happens normally say i am hearing impaired person i am sitting with another person who has no hearing impairment so at the same time i am telling oh you please increase the sound of the tv because if you don't increase the sound then what i hear i hear is not enough for me that means the acoustic input i get from the surrounding is not enough for me so please increase the sound of the television they are in bus stops bus stops and all also announcement is there you know bus stop railway station airport everywhere it is a noisy situation so in noisy situation when some announcement or something is done then at the same time person using hearing aid they had a difficulty to address this issue address this problem hearing aids were enabled to take multiple inputs at the same time but this technological intervention came with a cost or price that is interference and here we worked on that for the very first time which i can say and we found out that this interference is coming due to three different reasons three different situation because of three different uh, uh, scenarios what is that one is when the wirelessly received signal and the acoustic environment input received from the same source with both of them are very similar the wirelessly received signal and the acoustic input signal both are similar in that case you know when both are similar that means i am hearing a tv directly over the wireless in my hearing aid and somebody is hearing with a sound so i can directly hear it scenario number 1 scenario number 2 when both the things are similar but there is a delay in between that means when you know acoustic input directly arrives me and it arrives me over the wifi or the wireless there can be a sufficient amount of delay in between so when there is a delay then in that case how i how to address the problem of interference here more than the feedback the problem of interference is there multiple inputs entering a simple device which is nothing but an amplifier so if it is not properly managed what will happen wireless input will come acoustic input will come acoustic input means i am telling something you directly both will come both will interfere with one another so what the hearing aid person will hear he will hear nothing neither this nor that he will hear confusion he will get confused scenario number 3 is the most confusing scenario what it says when both acoustic inputs are independent for example i am watching the tv my hearing aid is directly connected to the wireless medium at the same time somebody is coming and telling me fire fire please run or there is some urgent thing he is telling but my hearing aid is directly connected to the tv so in that case fire can come and what will happen to me we all know so therefore in this three situations our signal processing experts we need to make technical intervention so that we can properly address the issues for the three interfering scenarios where multiple inputs are there in hearing aid let me go to the next slide so here we so we can say this is the foundational approach we went for that the probe which was basically used or the probe noise which is actually used for decorrelate or for feedback cancellation we use the probe noise to collect the signal which we receive over the wireless medium i am again repeating the probe signal till now we were discussing 
that it it is being used to reduce the correlation reduce the biasing but here the role of probe was changed so therefore the probe noise over here is not a noise it is actually the externally generated signal which we received over the wireless medium and we consider different cases where wirelessly received signal and the probe signal like we need to receive the wireless signal at some point in time at at for a particular input so we decided that rather than going for another another entire processing we will go and address this thing with the same processor which we have which is available with us with the same technique which is available with us rather than making it more complex so we considered the probe rather than being white signal as an externally generated signal all right what is the next step we did we went for a shaping filter the shaping filter what it does i will explain in this way with example let's say the input which i am receiving from the television set and i am receiving from with the speaker of the that means wirelessly from the television set that is the probe signal and also directly from the television set that is the xm acoustic input what i can do i can i cannot i may not hear the acoustic input let other others hear at their own volume i will directly receive from the television set that means in that case sk will be one and i will directly hear the probe signal and in that case the xn part gk will be made zero the gain will be made zero so at xn i do not hear got my point next in next case that when there is a delay in that case also i don't want to hear the delayed signal xn i want to hear the wireless signal rn in that case also sk will be all pole filter or can be one and xn in that case will also gk will be zero i will not hear x case number 3 is very important let's say i am hearing the tv but at the same time somebody is coming calling and telling me something because of which actually hearing it's the design they are designed to receive the near end signal somebody is telling me some important information that this is that this is the scenario that is the scenario somebody is telling in that case i should prioritize or the, my hearing aid should be intelligent enough to collect the signal xn rather than the signal rn that is the probe and because of this is what we developed in this entire thing in that case the sk the shaping filter should work like an all pole filter and rn in that case rather than wirelessly generated signal a r bar n which gets generated i will show you you see r n to r bar n this will be saved in such a way that r bar n works as a white noise so scenario number 3 when i am receiving near end signal in that case our objective is to use the probe signal as a white noise signal so if the probe is used as a white noise signal how it will like how i will use it because probe will be received by wifi so wireless medium so because of that we need to pass it through an all pole filter and which we also optimized i will show in my upcoming slides so that to get improved performance and feedback cancellation only for scenario number 3 so scenario 3 we need feedback cancellation scenario 1 and 2 there was no need of that one because directly we were receiving the signal over the wireless medium all right so here this is also a foundational approach we proposed that is all initial research were telling that our feed forward path which is that that means the gain is constant we proposed that the gain one part of the gain can be constant one one part of the gain can be vary but how it will vary how we will fix it for that we defined a cost function and try to optimize the gain with respect to the cost function so normally people used to optimize the filter weights with respect to the cost function we try to optimize the shaping filter and the feed forward path with respect to the cost function let's say the mean square so rather than only one optimize is the weight optimization we optimize the feed forward path and shaping filter why because here you see we are not going for all these jargonic terms like lpc vlpc vocoders and all the approach we are simply going for a simple feedback cancellation so when the feedback cancellation principle we are using it simple in that case the role of feed forward path and the role of shaping filter is very important so therefore all both these things we are address properly by optimizing them with respect to the output which we actually optimize the weight function 
and all the optimizations i am telling you over here are cyclic optimization but weight update is cyclic but here gbrk and sk that means the optimization for the feed forward path and optimization for the shipping filter both of them are performed in one step manner we get one step optimization like we get winners of minus w of equals to r inverse p in this way so what they depend on only the variation in the input or variation in the probe that is xn or rn so these results i am showing you were conducted with the help of human participants considering all ethical parameters so here we find that when we directly receive the signal wirelessly then there is no problem in the psq because psq value is quite higher even if no need to go for feed forward path optimization it is beyond 3.3 but in scenario number 2 we found that it increases to 2.85 close to 3 which is the acceptable value when the feed forward path and the shipping filter are optimized and for scenario number 3 when feed forward path and shipping filter both are optimized and you see it was a difficult scenario actually because we are receiving the input from both the ends so there was cross correlation there cross there was not cross correlation there was cross talk in that situation we found peculiarly you can see i have circled in red over here that here the actually the psq should be low but people those who evaluated this they found that uh, with the listening test also and the psq listening test results are the next page next slide so you see that we actually got encouraged encouraging results we got improved results compared to the scenario number 2 so this was the biggest achievement for us that by proposing multiple optimizations multiple optimization for one structure all everywhere the approach was to propose only one optimization or to optimize the filter or to optimize the structure here we went for optimizing the feed forward path one part is fixed one is optimized and optimizing the um, uh, shipping filter and as well as the filter weights using adaptive signal processing or advanced signal processing techniques so with that we got improved results which has been shown in the earlier slide psq values and also the listening test and the mos scores there can also be many other tests can also be conducted like mrt modified rhyme test rt rhyme test so many number of other tests can also be conducted with the help of okay let me go to the next slide so afc or feedback cancellation in frequency domain so you see till now whatever i was telling you i let me see how much time is there with me okay i have still some 10 minutes time with me so till now whatever we were discussing everywhere we were dealing it with directly in time domain rather than in frequency domain so frequency domain analysis is very important why because there people normally hear a particular frequency are not able to hear a particular frequency and we all know this fourier and all when it came it helped a lot in our signal processing because there are number of parameters which we can identify and we can see when we go to frequency domain rather than in time domain so frequency domain analysis helps a lot but in time domain analysis we have some predefined parameters which are actually uh, well known for because it is quite easy to optimize those parameters. for example the mean square error the mean square deviation but the aforementioned techniques this performance measures which are there they have the disadvantage that in time domain we are in a, there is a, an inability to find out or to see each and every parameter or each and every important aspect or like which frequency the person is able to hear in which frequency is not able to hear to go for a comprehensive spectrogram analysis somehow it was absent in the time domain when we were doing the entire analysis therefore we followed an existing research proposed by mengo and cs in nakagawa those who are mengo is from our albog university only and nakagawa from the australia so there we found that they are using one more function which they are naming as ptf that means power transfer function which they are using in place of msc and msd and they are going in for frequency domain to analyze more electroacoustic characteristics of the feedback path and to shed more light on some important parameters which we can analyze further in the frequency domain so we also try to do our research in the same way and rather than doing this doing it or working with the simple or basic feedback cancellation we did this analysis for a 
linear prediction based feedback cancellation which we already developed in the year 2017 so we did the entire comprehensive analysis for the structure with the help of this lpc with the help of our uh, power transfer function based frequency domain analysis and the results were also quite encouraging because we got improved results compared to nakagawa and uh, dr guo and at the same time we uh, uh, found that uh, the convergence and steady state analysis which we performed for the very first time in the frequency to for the frequency domain analysis that uh, the least square and the uh, msc based algorithms their performance was quite similar when we studied them in frequency domain so you see these are the results one is first one is the is a with the speech signal the female speech actually so the speech signal and the red color mark are the formants so you are showing the spectrogram and you can see the figure number b and c are the all the high frequency you see now x axis is my frequency in kilohertz and y axis is y axis is the speech signal of which we are representing over a period of time from 0 to 5 second so you see all the high frequency components we are removing over here so high frequency component we are removing when we are removing then we are reducing the biasing biasing is reduced but at the same time the challenge or one more scope of research we found that we are also removing the information at higher frequency information at higher frequency should be intact but we are removing reducing the bias and at the same time we are also removing the information which is there at the high frequency value which needs to be addressed properly all right so this is again the scope of research on which we are working that how we will remove the high frequency biasing only not particular information that means the red color marks the formants which are there at the higher frequency value the high frequency ones this is the final thing i am presenting i will go through it quickly normally researchers comment and you know this work i am showing a uh, tap length optimization after a couple of rejection it got uh, accepted and the reason behind it is it was very difficult to convey why optimizing the structure for hearing aids is important because people normally say for hearing aid you know the filter is of very small size 50 100 or 100 150 taps are enough but we found in various research people are going for random fixing of filter somebody is telling 75 order is perfect somebody is telling 100 is perfect somebody is telling 150 is perfect so what is the final order nobody knows and we need to fix the final value of filter order how to fix it how to get the final value of the filter tap length or we can say in other words the optimum value of filter tap optimum value how to get it that is what we have or we already performed that is the importance of tap length and short and long filters this was already we because parallelly i do number of work so i work on feedback along with that eco machine learning and some other techniques so in eco it is tap length thing it was quite successful because there we go for thousands of taps and optimizing the filter order or the total number of taps by proposing the same cyclic optimization you say the mlm techniques or applied ml techniques lms based techniques we optimize the filter taps that means how many number of weights or coefficients are enough for the process the same technique we used for the feedback cancel and i have not shown any block diagram for that because there is you know tap length optimization doesn't follow any block diagram it has just step by step procedures so we found that shorter filters have faster convergence longer filters have slower convergence so if we go for optimization technique where one user an engineer will fix the filter order at a particular value so that it can go up it can come down irrespective of the variation in the time varying feedback path then the job of the Uh, acoustician or the, the, the design engineer becomes quite simplified so therefore we went for tap length optimization and the results are in front of you we really got encouraging results the job which was earlier done with 250 taps it was able we were able to do it 75 taps without any degradation in performance and also we found that at lower tap length the misalignment increases that means you know we get degraded result so sometimes if let's say i am design engineer i'm fixing the number of coefficients if i follow a random fixing of filter order then it may happen that uh, uh, that uh, i get under model so therefore if i go for optimum fixing of filter length i can avoid under modeling i can avoid over modeling it will opt automatically it will vary the filter order all right so with this
i will i just like to shed some light on my future or on our future work so presently we are working on number of topics and i'm also uh, searching for scholars who can like work on one or more topics on this one is the cascade adaptive filters like my number of adaptive filters are put together you all might be knowing about cascade amplifier so in the cascade structure of adaptive filters for improving the convergence speed overall convergence speed for retaining the high frequency components you see retaining the high frequency component of the signal is very important what we are doing when we are going for the lpc based approach we are removing the high frequency bias now with the probe signal we are removing the low frequency bias but when we are removing the high frequency bias it has been seen that we are also removing the information at high frequency then to go for neural adaptive filter that means properly applying the neural networks adaptive filter already we have started working on kernelized adaptive filter which you can say machine learning based approach to adaptive filter a number of things we have published and this neural adaptive filtering is also something on which we are now interested to work and that to its application for feedback cancellation and hearing aids then completely removing the dependency on the feed forward path feed forward path delay is there but sometimes it creates issues for us so if you can completely remove the dependency on the feed forward path by splitting the gain technique is already there if we can evolve some better and faster technique then that is on something is also quite important then user data analysis let's say we proposed everything sound quality also we enhance now whatever user data we are getting because those who are using the hearing aids we need to go them we need to approach them we need to get the information from them and in india the actually it is a challenge to get all the user data because this structure is quite unorganized over here people take hearing aid some go some throw them people change here the doctor very frequent like we change toothbrush people change doctors over here so getting the information from a particular acoustician from a particular ent specialist is very tough this is not a situation in other places where i have done the research earlier so getting user data and analysis still at this present time also i am depending on my international collaborators because here in india it is very unorganized and that is the reason the of dropouts in india is more than anywhere in this world dropouts means those who use the hearing aid and throw it then last is smart hearing aids for which we are already partnering with lnt technology services and uh, we have approached them for a project in which we want to make the hearing aid enabled by the mobile phone like in my mobile phone i can change the various features and parameters of the my hearing aid without going to the acoustician i can increase the gain i can decrease the gain i can put my hearing aid in the sleep mode so for this partnering with industry industry is necessary because this has commercial value already this sort of products are available abroad but their cost is very high our objective is to make it at low price for our indian prospect and these are the references which i followed for preparing this presentation for you thank you very much so i will still stay on my ppt so that if anyone is going to ask any doubt or on any particular like slide then so that you can feel free to ask uh, any question to i am done with my presentation as i told that i will complete uh, uh, in 1 hour and 20 or 25 minutes so i have completed in 1 hour 24 minutes and still some time is left so madam please encourage the participants and i also encourage uh, please ask questions or any doubts uh, which you might have noted during this presentation sure sir participants if you have any queries you can uh, please uh, call you mean ask sir you can unmute and ask the questions yes don't hesitate if you are working in this field or you are like you have doing research already publishing or you want to know something more on what i talked and anything you can please feel free to ask that's why i have kept uh, last 5 minutes for for question and answer <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
sir uh, generally uh, we used to have uh, in rehabilitation we will be having conventional uh, uh, hearing aids uh, no sir when compared to this uh, uh, digitized uh, hearing aid uh, what all the uh, changes which we have uh, done sir in the current uh, you know hearing aids with right. respect to the conventional one yeah so to answer your question in little detail i will say previously the hearing aids which were coming more conventional i will say they are a walkman type walkman means they are purely analog in nature simple our computer amplifiers are there they will amplify the signal they are a walkman type hearing aid purely analog in nature so in analog hearing aids which receive analog signal you cannot do any digital processing so when you cannot even if the behind the ear hearing aids initially were analog in nature in analog we can go for asp not for dsp and when i cannot perform any dsp any digital signal processing how i will enhance how i will do all this playback cancellation how because all the algorithms you know we try we teach our students signal and system then dsp then advanced dsp and filter theory because the research has progressed itself or moved ahead in digital aspect so if we go for analog device then any signal processing or signal enhancement or sound quality enhancement is very difficult to apply but if we simply go for a to d conversion and do the analysis in digital domain then everything i talked about is possible and let me tell it is not only available in simulation these things are some of them like basic feedback cancellation has gone into the device and it has gone into the device in form of a chip which is a purely digitized chip so therefore digital processing or dig of hearing aid is necessary due to three reasons first of all better sound quality next is flexibility that means if some part is wrong it is repairable also modular in nature and point number 3 it also reduces the size and point number 4 is very important that all this digital processing also reduces the burden on the battery that means the battery power is also for all the digital hearing aids if you can see some people those who are using the conventional big and thick and bulky hearing aid their battery the zinc air battery last for minimum number of days but those who are using digital hearing aids sophisticated hearing aids and they are not that sophisticated they are quite affordable right now so their their battery is also the number of advantages are there uh, for using the digital any other question please feel free to ask don't hesitate thank you <laughs> cynthia madam you please ask some question yes sir <laughs> <laughs> so i have given a uh, insight about how digital um, Uh, signal processing can be used in enhancing the quality of the sound for your uh, aid right. machines, right, sir? Right, so right. Actually, uh, this uh, this uh, thing is it is somehow always for a speaker very challenging to put together his oh. entire uh, his or her entire research in one and half hour and to present. So my attempt was in with the help of presenting this research, just to uh, create an awareness about the hearing loss and. basic need of hearing aid when you have little bit of difficulty that was the first thing second thing was just to tell about the evolution like what is the evolution whether bigger size was there why smaller size came in smaller size came then what are the signal processing issues which were there and then how the issues are addressed so just to provide an overall portrait or picture to all the participants so that they can know there is hearing science in which signal processing is important and let me add to it there are number of industries in india and abroad who are working in this field and they are in with enthusiasm in this situation covid situation also they are putting advertisement and recruiting people whom they are recruiting those who know a little bit of acoustic signal processing little bit of idea about this device and unfortunately india on this research is limited most of the research is done in european country in us in singapore and we just import the hearing aid so when we import it price increases because we have to put there do the import charge is less on the aided devices but still charge is there so price increases so if we can do the r&d if an indian manufacturer will open like the r&d and this development over here then you know this uh, this price will further come down and all the sophisticated hearing aids those who are in 30000 40000 will be you know quite affordable for everybody and even if government can distribute this advanced hearing aids to people rather than going for distributing the analog 
uh, hearing aids through the NGOs and all. So therefore, the R&D in this field is uh, necessary and it has to be done uh, with the make in India thing in India. And therefore, uh, I am a small player in it. I am uh, still working. So I am collaborating with people from All India Institute of Speech and Hearing. Uh, we have submitted, we are planning to submit project proposal. Uh, so, because that is the only organization in India which is really doing good. It is in Mysore uh, that AI is All India Institute of Speech and Hearing. If you have some time and you are really interested in hearing science, to study about it, to do research on it, then you can visit that organization. Many people, those who are from that organization, are settled abroad and working in top notch uh, universities, either as acoustician, hearing aid industries, and all. Though it is a small organization, quite effective organization. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So we have uh, understood that there is so much to be done for developing a hearing aid. Yeah. Signal processing behind it. <laughs> Developing yeah, you can do better. Exactly. <laughs> but the processing is very important. <laughs> yes, the signal processing view. Right, 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 madam. Right. <laughs> is there any other queries, participants? Sir, shall we wind up, sir? Yes, yes. I am done. I was just waiting for questions. <laughs> I think there are no questions. Yeah. Then we can wind up. I express my sincere thanks to our speaker, Dr. Ashutoshka from IIPDM Kanjipuram for presenting the topic Sound Quality Enhancement in Digital Hearing Aids Using Advanced Signal Processing Techniques. So your session was more informative and we have learned more how signal processing has been used in your development of hearing aid with respect to the sound quality enhancement. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation readily. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all participants also for your patience and for being with me. And uh, so I hope you all are in home. And if it is not urgent, don't go outside. Take proper care of yourself and your family. So I hope you have a healthy time in this pandemic situation. So stay safe, stay healthy. And one come from my side. Take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. So I'm logging out, madam. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participants, the next session starts at 11.45.